hit record here. We're recording now. Hopefully you have Unreal open. And I am going to mute everybody. But again, if you need to chat or whatever, ask a question, feel free to either type it in chat, give me a hands up icon in the chat, or, um, you know, just say, you know, unmute yourself and say, hey, I have a question and I will do my best to answer it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, we'll save all. Yes. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay, that's fine, cancel. Um, all right, so what do we need to do? Um, so let's open up Unreal. And then what I want you to do is go to your core folder. Inside your core folder, you should have platform. And inside platform um, blueprint, we're going to go to our on component begin overlap player collision. And we're going to go all the way to the right side right here where is cube is placed. And we're going to add some stuff here. All right. So I'm just going to hit C to add a comment. I'm going to say we're going to change the, um, the cube, let's see, the platform material. And then I'm going to hit C again and make another comment. And we're going to add a particle effect. Particle, particle effect. I'm spelling that so wrong. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, like, like a par party particle effect, like, hey, you're going to be here in class for the door. Am I supposed to, is it supposed to be a hybrid class? I thought it was all remote. So there's a second person asked me that. I don't mind coming into class and teaching you guys in class, but all my project files are on my computer, my personal computer. That's not a laptop. No, oh, yes, yes, yes. I'll be here for that. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Um, okay, what was it doing? Platform material, particle effect. And then, uh, oops, let's see again. We'll do like, whatever else. I don't know. We could do some cool stuff. All right. <clears throat> so uh, let's start with changing the platform material. So we're going to minimize this. We're going to go back to our editor. In our editor, we're going to click on the content folder. And you don't you don't have this you don't have this art folder so we're going to make that so let me delete this art folder. All right, so click on the content folder. You're going to right click on it. You're going to say new folder, and then it's going to ask you, well, what do you want to name that folder? And of course, we're going to name it art because we're going to add uh, some more cool art to our project. Um, so uh, have the art folder selected. We'll right click the art folder. We're going to do something a little different here. We're going to click on FX and then Niagara emitter, this one right here. All right, and when you click it, it brings up this menu new emitter or copy from existing. We don't have an existing emitter yet, so we'll have to do new. We'll hit next. And then you have these templates, which are kind of cool. So I'm going to expand this up a little bit so you can see the different templates. So we have uh, a directional burst. So this would be like a shotgun sh shotgun blast, right? Uh, we have a beam. So it's like, uh, you know, a laser beam or whatever. Um, we have an empty template. We have a fountain. That's the one we're going to use. And a fountain is like uh, what you just saw um, a second ago on my, uh, on my personal platform before I delete it. We have hang particles. So this is like um, dust in the air and stuff like that. Uh, omnidirectional means it starts in the center and explodes all over the place. And then we have uh, a sprite burst, which is similar to the regular burst, but it's using sprites instead. And a static beam means that the beam can't be moved. Um, and then an upward a mesh burst. So we could use different types of meshes to make a burst. All right, so, uh, and then you also have behavior examples. So you guys can look over those if you want, if you want to learn more about the particle system. For two days, the third and today, I'm here. You just showed up is what happened. Because I, uh, this is for Andrew, yeah. So if you show up late, then you get marked absent. 
Any of you want to talk about it after class, we can. All right, so anyway, uh, we're going to go back to the templates right here. And we're going to select fountain. Fountain. And we're going to hit finish. And then it's going to create that Niagara emitter for us. And what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, in, uh, sorry, em for emitter underscore. And they're just going to label this fountain. All right, then we're going to uh, double click this um, fountain. And when we do, uh, you get the, um, this is the emitter um, editor. So a lot of stuff going on here. Um, we, we'll talk about this another day, but I just want to show you that like, hey, there's another editor and you can make all sorts of different particles and you can change all sorts of different values. As an example, we can change the spawn rate so we can have like a billion, a billion particles or maybe we only have like three particles, <laughs> right? Um, so I'll change it back to 90. Uh, the other thing is we have, um, what I want you guys to change is the sprite renderer. So, um, oh, we haven't created the material yet. We'll create the material. So, uh, but what we're going to do in the sprite renderer is we're going to adjust this material to be um, green. So we need to make that material first. So we'll do is minimize this. And uh, in the same art folder, we'll right click again. We'll go to materials and textures. And then in materials and textures, we're going to go to material. And we'll call this um, basic, um, hmm. we'll just do basic, I don't know a good name for it. Basic, tog basic toggle, uh, or yeah, we'll do, uh, yeah, basic toggle underscore mat like that. All right, then we're going to double click it. And it brings us into our material editor. For those of you guys who are in the art track, you've probably seen this before. And anyone who's used Maya before and it needs to set up a Lambert, this is similar. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to come out of base color. So we're going to drag out a noodle out of base color. And we're going to type in a parameter. Uh, what is it? Parameter, I believe. Parameter. Um, vertex? Vertex color. Sorry. Vertex color is what we want, I believe. That doesn't look right. That's not right. What is it? Should just be colors and particle color. Nope, that's not the right one. What? What's going on? What am I doing wrong? Parameter. Blah blah blah. Scalar parameter? No, that's not it either. Parameter. What am I? Why do I not know which one it is? Vector parameter. Ah, oh, there it is. Vector parameter. Okay. Okay. Of course. So vector parameter. This is the one we want. There we go. And we're going to rename this to color. So again, it's va uh, right click anywhere, or you can drag out a noodle. Vector parameter. This guy right there. All right. And then you're going to name it color. And you can hit F2 to rename it, or you can right click and say rename. Oh, actually, you could do it right here under the details panel. And I just drag the white pin, the white pin to the white pin like that. And that's going to do all of them. And then from there, um, we can just leave it black. We'll hit apply. And that should change it to um, black, which it did. And um, what else can we do? Let's do an emissive. So we'll do, um, if you hold down the one key, the number one on your, on your keyboard and you just left click, you'll get this, uh, this guy right here. And then just gonna connect that right into the missile color. 
And then we'll also right click that guy and say convert to parameter. And we're going to call this uh, glow. And our default value will be, let's see, we can change it to one and see what happens. Oh, that's way so bright, super bright. Um, let's do 0.5 maybe, 0.05. There we go, default value of 0 0.05, so it looks good. And I'll hit apply and save. And this will all make sense in a second. So the color right now is black and that's perfectly fine, but it's all gonna make sense in a second. So compile and save, or apply, sorry, and then save. And then we're gonna, uh, I'll give you a second to set that up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and make a material instance. We're gonna make two material instances actually. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click this basic toggle material and say, create material instance. <clears throat> I want to do it, uh, it renames itself perfectly for me. Actually, I just messed it up. So I'm going to delete that, go away. Uh, except I want to add the words underscore red for this one. And then I'm going to right click it again, create material instance. And I'm going to underscore this one as green like that. And we'll start with the green one. So I'm just gonna double click the green one. And right here, you can see under the details panel, I have the ability to change the glow and the ability to change the color. So if I click the checkbox for the color, and then I can go and make this guy green. There we go, green. Right, okay. And then I can also change the glow amount. So I can make it like really bright, or no brightness, right? And we'll go ahead and hit save. And then I'm gonna to go to the red one. So I'm gonna double click that guy, do color. And maybe the red one doesn't glow at all. So we'll say zero glow on the red one. And under color, we'll just change red to one like that. Hit okay. or you can click on it and change it to whatever color you want. It doesn't matter. All right, so now we have a red and a green. Now, why will we do this versus just having two materials that are red and green? Well, uh, this is an instance of this material. So if I make changes to this material, as an example, let's say I, um, I don't know, I, add some metallic to it. So we'll do like a one, uh, one again, and then we'll change this to like, I don't know, five or something. And then maybe I disconnect the glow completely, I hit apply. And now you can see the difference of how it changed. It has like a shimmer to it now, almost like it's metallic, right? So you can do that for all, it, it does it for all of them. And then let's say, you know, I don't want that anymore. And um, I want, uh, actually here, we'll just, we'll do uh, roughness and make it like really rough looking. So we'll hit apply again, save and apply. And we'll go back. And now you can see how they have changed their, they don't have that metallic flavor to them anymore. So you can mess with this, plug in how you want. Maybe uh, maybe the glow is not a straight white glow, but it's also like this color. So what we'll do is we will do multiply here and then we'll connect this guy like that and then put that like that. And then that should do the color. So if I change this like red, red, there we go. And then we multiply this by like 123. Yeah, see, there you go. So now it has like a red glow to it. So we'll apply here and save. 
And maybe I'll disconnect these again because maybe I don't want that. That looks okay to me. And so now I can go back to my material. So, so you can see I add this like how it is. I can go to my materials and I can say, uh, you know, the glow here is pretty low value. Maybe I want it to be a hundred, like super glow and it's crazy amount of glow. And then for our red, Maybe the red also it only has look like a glow of one or maybe a glow of five or something like that. Oh, it's like an orange almost. It's kind of cool. 1.5. You can totally mess with it like that. Maybe it had metallic too. It's fun to mess with this. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I like it. Okay, so whatever you got set, it's fine. You can mess with it a little bit. And um, once you got it set, then go up to uh, up back to your main editor. You're gonna go to File, Save All. And I, I'm getting this error because I was messing with stuff. So I just, just hit OK or continue or whatever. Yeah, that's fine. If you get that error, you shouldn't get that error. Okay, so now. We can go to our fountain and we can go to Sprite Renderer in our EM Fountain Sprite Renderer. And right here where it says material, and we can change that material um, to basic toggle underscore mat. So basic toggle underscore material instance green. And we'll hit apply and save. And now we have this crazy. How did you get the fountain again? That's a good question. One second. Um, so to get the fountain, you're going to right click. You're going to go to um, FX Niagara emitter. And then from there, you're going to say new emitter. One second. Okay, so you're going to click New Emitter. Okay. Next. And then from there, um, Fountain, this one right here, Fountain, and then Finish. And you'll name it EM. Fountain. And then you and then you should have your little particle effect like that. All right, so that's all we're gonna do for today for the for the uh, particle effect. I don't want to get too too involved in that. Um, so now we need to go into the blueprint of our platform and adjust it so that we can get these materials and apply them whenever the player walks over the uh, platform. So we're going to go to our core folder. We're going to go to our BP platform blueprint. We will open that back up and bring back it where we are. So right here we have our change the platform material. So that was our first like comment of what we wanted to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our platform. So here we have platform mesh. We're going to left click and drag it. You can, you can put it anywhere. It doesn't matter. And from there, we're going to drag out from that guy. And we're going to say set material. And it's this guy right here, set material. And we can. Uh, right here where it says material, we can say select asset and it's going to be basic uh, toggle material instance green. We'll start with green first. And then we'll just connect it right here. It is a cube place. It's yes. And then we'll check. And actually, uh, if I remember correctly, we needed to fix this. So we'll fix that uh, soon. But for now, we'll just keep doing this material stuff. All right. So now, um, when I step onto the platform, the material should change to this material. 
And so to test that, we're going to go to our variables. Does player have the companion cube variable? We'll go to the details panel of that, that variable, and we're going to make sure that the default value is set to true because we want to go through the true flow, right? Yes, the player slipped on the platform. Yes, he has a companion cube and whatever these uh, nodes are. So we'll hit play and test it out. And when I step on it, you can see now that it is glowing green. And with the green light, it really looks like it's glowing crazy green, right? It's no problem. You can you can uh, catch up with the with the video, Maurice. All right, so we'll, so we know that works. So let's uh, let's do the same thing. Let me expand this back out and bring this back over here. And we'll do the same thing. So I'm just going to grab these two guys. I'm going to hold on Control and hit C to copy, and then Control and V is in Victor to paste. And I'm going to connect this guy like that. But this is the uh, the player does not have the companion cube. He doesn't have it. So uh, what we need to do now is instead of saying basic material, basic toggle, mat, green, we want the red one, the red one. So now it's set to the red one. I'm going to go back to our variables. Does player have companion cube? And say no, it's false by default. And then we'll hit play. I want to step on it, it should turn green. Yes, perfect. Did I say it should turn green? I did say it should turn green. It should turn red. That's what I meant to say. I apologize. Because we don't have we don't have the companion cube yet. Okay, so change the materials is there. That's good. Now we want to add a particle effect, but only whenever I get it, right? Like a cool like yay you did it so let's let's do that so what we'll do is we'll go back to our main editor we're going to go to file and save all just to save everything we've done so far then we're going to go to the art folder right here where we have our em underscore fountain and we have the particle all set in green right what we'll do from there is we're going to right click this fountain, EM fountain. We're going to right click it and say, create Niagara system. That guy right there, create Niagara system. Uh, and then it rena renames it EM underscore fountain system. I, I don't like that naming convention. Instead, uh, we're going to do. Um, what is it? Uh, NS for Niagara system underscore fountain. Because you can actually have a ton of emitters inside a system. Okay, so now we'll double click our system and look at it, just make sure that it's, it looks the same and it does. And you can see here we have our fountain and we can uncheck it and it goes away. And we can check it back and it's there again. So this is good, we can close. Just making sure it works. It looks like it's working. We can close it and that's good to go. So then now we need to go back to our platform. So I'll go to core blueprint platform. And here we have this add particle effect. So what we're gonna do is just right click anywhere in our um, event graph on the blueprint platform. So that we get this context menu. And in that context menu, we're gonna say, um, Oh, nope, I take that back. I take that back. You need this part right here, which, okay, so let's start over. To add the particle effect, you need to go to add components. We need to add the particle effect. Um, and so what we'll do is we're gonna type in Niagara. And here it is right here, Niagara particle system. We click on that and we'll name this NS fountain, the same as our particle system. With uh, the particle system selected in your components uh, block here, we'll go to the details panel. And in the details panel, under Niagara category, we have Niagara system asset. So we'll click on that. 
And when we do, you can see the only one available is the found one because that's the only one we've created so far. All right, so we do not uh, want it to turn on immediately as soon as the game starts, right? We can actually we can test it now. So we'll hit play, hit play, and you can see that it's running, right? As soon as the game starts, it runs. That's not what we want. We actually want it to turn on only when the player enters and only when it's uh, the player has the stuff. So we'll go back to our platform. Niagara Fountain, uh, sorry, Niagara System underscore Fountain, Details Panel. And right here under Activation category, we have this Auto Activate. We're going to uncheck that, uncheck it. And we'll compile and save. And now we can add the Niagara system, fountain system to our event graph. And from there, we can drag out. And if you haven't guessed yet, what we're gonna do is just toggle this auto activate. So we're gonna type in activate. And you can see here, activate NS fountain. Oops, if that happens, you only need one of them. And we're also going to make sure the reset button is checked. And it's just going to refresh it from the beginning, which is perfectly fine for us. OK, so now we'll compile and save. We'll go back to hit and play. And you can see, um, because I do not have the companion cube, the fountain is not turning on. And um, um, the fountain doesn't turn on automatically when the game starts. So that's looking good. So we'll go back to does player have companion cube variable. We're gonna check it as true so we can test it when the player does have the companion cube. Play and our particle system works. It's activated when the player does have the companion cube. So that's looking really good. All right, so um, let's see what else. Okay, so we have all this stuff. We can come back to this, whatever else. What we need to do now is say, um, when the player leaves, right? So when the player leaves that player collision, um, we're turning off the helper text and we're also uh, setting the color and all that back to default. But we need to do the same thing for our material. And if they activated the particle effect, we need to deal with that too. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna left click and drag and grab both the set material noodle, I'm sorry, set material nodes and this activate nodes. And I'm just gonna do control C to copy it. Go down to our on end overlap flow and paste it like that with control V. And for material, I want it to be uh, I think it's basic shape, oops, caps lock, basic shape material. This one right there. Um, and we don't want to activate the, um, the fountain. Again, when I leave, we actually want to deactivate. So I'm going to drag out a, a noodle from this NS fountain. I'm going to type in deactivate. And there it is right there, deactivate. And I will get rid of this node and only leave the deactivation. And then I will connect up our flow, our execution pin to execution pin from this node to this node. Compile and save. Now, when I leave and player leaves platform, Reset material and uh, stop particles if they started. All right, let's see if that works. So we hit play. Uh, I step on the platform, particles come on. The light changes, the text renderer changes, the material is glowing, and you know, with double rainbows, everything is great.
where are we supposed to get the basic shape material? Oh, if you're not seeing that basic shape material, uh, which is a, a possibility. So if you go right here and you're like, uh, I typed in basic shapes and it is not showing up, or basic shape and it's not showing up, that's okay. You're gonna go to this view options right here. You're gonna click on that. And you want to make sure show engine content is checked. Okay, Cody, I got your message. Anyway, once you have show engine content checked, then you should be able to see basic shape now. Cool, perfect. All right, um, make sure you have deactivation and then we can test it again. So we'll test one more time. It, it turns on, we got fountain, looks great. And then we walk away, it turns off, perfect. Okay, so uh, what else can we do? Let's, um, we have this whatever else and we got lots of time. So let's do, um, let's do a uh, play, uh, player enters and door knob, knob turns green or red, right? Depending on what they do. So what we could do is we'll go um, to our um, go to our door. So right here underscore BP door. This guy. We'll go to that guy, and we have our is Q place flow right. So the player begin overlap is Q place. Actually, what we'll do is we'll make a we'll make a new function that will turn on the door, uh, turn the door green or red, doorknob, sorry, just the doorknob only, green or red. Um, so we'll do is we'll go functions. Again, we're in our door blueprint functions, my blueprint functions. This is the guy right here, pl this plus function. I will say toggle door material. And we will grab this is cube is placed. Actually, you know what? We don't need that. Let's see. Is cube is placed. How do we want to do that? What do we want to do? Yeah, we'll do it this way. Is cube is placed. We'll drag that as a getter. We'll do a branch and we'll connect it like that. By the way, I hit the B key. I held down the B key and then hit left click. To create a branch. So I'm holding the B key and the left clicking to create branches. Uh, we'll connect up our flow. And then from there, we'll say, um, we'll grab our doorknob. We'll do a getter for a doorknob. I remember to drag out a getter, you hold down control and then you left click and drag, and that'll do getters for you. Okay. Now, if you want a setter, you hold down Alt. But right now we're just getting the doorknob and we're going to change the material. So doorknob, new noodle, uh, set material. And the material is going to be, um, what was it? Basic toggle instant material instance green. Connect that guy to our true. And then I'm going to copy and paste this guy, connect up our doorknob noodle to the target. So this noodle goes to the target, right? And then we'll go basic toggle instance red. And we'll connect that to the false. Okay. So we have the function, but the um, 
we're not, we never call this function. We haven't done anything to say, hey, use this function. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the platform. And I don't know if we've done, got the door or not. Yes, we did. Or we already got the door. So we already have the door. So that's good. So now what we can do is we can go, let's see, do they have, does the player have the companion cube? Yes, they do. We set up the particle effect. Okay, cool. So what we'll do now is we'll grab the door uh, and I'm grabbing the door from my blueprints under the variables category, BP underscore door. And we'll drag up from there and we're gonna say uh, set door, um, no, what did I call it? Oh man, what did I call it? Toggle door material, sorry. So toggle door, there it is, boom. Oops, and it, it generated two doors. We don't really need one. So I'll delete the other one. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna connect the flow from both the false and the true to this, just like that. And we'll compile and save. And then we'll hit play. And I'm gonna do my best to look at the door. Oh yeah, you can see it happening already, right? The door is super green. <laughs> or the door knob, I mean. Um, okay, so if I go and I say no, no, hit play. Um, okay, our doorknob is white. And then I step on it and you can see now the doorknob is red until I get the correct companion cube. Um, so uh, what else could we do? Let's see, we wanna go, let's go back to the door. Let's go back to this toggle door material. It actually, we're not toggling the doors material. We're actually toggling the door knob. So let's rename this toggle door material. We'll rename it to um, toggle door knob material. That looks better. And we will, let's add another branch. So I'm gonna hold down B and left click. And then we'll fix our flow here. And we are going to go uh, to true. It's gonna go into this branch. And I'm actually gonna drag this like this. And if it's false, I'm gonna grab this doorknob uh, node and grab this set material node, copy and paste. And I'm gonna change it back to uh, basic shape material, this one right there. And we will drag that like that to the false. And then what we'll do is we're gonna drag this condition right into our input node to create a condition here. And uh, I'm gonna click on that input node and I'm gonna rename it under the details panel of that condition, I'm gonna rename it to um, reset door uh let's see sorry it's not door it's door door knob material reset door knob material compile and save and so what happens now is um well actually it'll be right here so if we want to uh, reset the door we can do it right here and then this checks to see if the cube is placed. And if it is, then it changes the color. And if it isn't, it changes the color, right? So we'll compile and save here. We'll go back to the platform. And you can see here, I have this new value into my node that says, hey, do you wanna reset the door? And in this case, I don't, right? Because I am changing the color. Uh, sorry, I keep saying door, it's doorknob. I'm changing the color because I'm stepping on the platform. However, I'm gonna grab both of these nodes again, the door and the toggle door material uh, function. And I'm gonna add it to our end overlap all the way to the end here. And I'm gonna connect the flow up. And now I'm gonna say, yes, do reset the door material back to basic shape. And so now when I hit play, 
and uh, you can see the doorknob is white. I step on the platform. Oh no, it's not working. We gotta figure out why it's not working. Oh, I have it inverted. <laughs> I have it inverted. Okay, okay, okay. That's my bad. Let's go to. Let's go to the door. Let's go to the toggle doorknob material, which I'm here already, and I have I have this backwards. This is backwards. So I am going to hold down Alt and delete this node, and then I'm going to hold down Control and drag it like that. There we go. Looks better. And then I will put this up here. And this guy like this, so it looks a little bit more user friendly. There we go. There we go. That that should fix it. So now I hit play. Let's test it out. Yay. All right, cool. So let's take a look at um, this one more time so you guys can see it. So if I want to reset the doorknob material, then I say, yes, I do. And then it resets it. If I say no, then I check to see, did they place the companion cube? And if they did, then set the correct material. And if they didn't, then set it as red. All right, so what else can we do? Let's, um, let's, uh, Let's go to the player player um, blueprint. And what we'll do is we'll say, hey, whenever I hit a certain key, I'm going to, uh, I'll either jiggle the handle, like, you know, like it's locked, or um, I will rotate the handle to say, yes, the door can be opened. And actually, um, oh man, I forgot who it was on Thursday. I think it was Brandon who kind of like enlightened me to this idea. So appreciate that. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, click on first person character in our world outliner. The first person, if you can't find it, right there, first person. Or you can go to content, first person blueprint, blueprints, first person character. Either way, it's the same one. All right, we'll just click edit blueprint. You can also double click on it. No, you can't. You have to click on Edit Blueprint. I'm sorry. Or you can double click it right here. And if you remember correctly, we messed with this before, right? We got rid of the gun and we got rid of that annoying sound noise. Um, but we're going to add in a, um, a uh, button to interact with the doorknob. Um, and we'll call it like the Use button. So let's see, what do we want to do? And by the way, uh, this is sort of off the cuff. So if I, if it, Stuff doesn't work, it doesn't work, and we'll do our best to try and figure it out because this is where in the whatever else cool things can we do before we get into the companion queue portion. Um, all right, so uh, let's see. Um, what we want to do is we want to add a use function, a use button function. So actually, I'm going to minimize all this. We'll go back to our main editor. I'm going to go to edit right here at the top. And then in edit, I'm going to click on project settings, this one right here, project settings. And when I do, it brings up the project settings tab. And then in project settings, I'm going to go down to input, right here, input. And this is all the default keys that you're going to tell the, you know, assign to your game that the player is going to use. So click on that. And then we're going to click on action mappings. And you can see now I have jump, fire, and reset VR. So I'm going to click this little plus symbol. And when I do, it creates a new action mapping for me. I'm going to rename that to use key. And I mean, I play a lot of first person shooters and I personally like F as my use key. So I'm gonna hit the F key here. Obviously not a game pad. So keyboard F. You can set it to whatever you want. Um, in space bar, whatever. I don't think you can do space bar because I think jump is space bar. Yeah, jump is already space bar. 
All right, so that's set. We'll go back to our first person example map here, uh, the main editor. We'll go back into our first person character blueprint. And inside our first person character blueprint, doesn't matter where, but anywhere in the event graph, we're gonna right click and say, um, use key. And you can see we have input action events, use key. And this is coming from, this is coming from our project settings input, this one right here. So if I change this to um, bacon, use key, right? And then I go bacon, use key, see? So you can name it whatever you want. Use key. All right, so um, when the player presses the use key, let's see, when they press the use key, then we want to, um, let's see, we'll do, we'll do comments, not that one, right here. Let's see, when the player presses the use key, we want to get the door, and then we want to check if the, player has the cube and then we want to uh if no then uh jiggle handle because it's already going to set it to red and green and if it's uh if it's yes if yes then rotate handle right so the flow will be Check to see if they press the key. If they did, oh, we also need to say um, get door. And then we need to say, is player close enough to the doorknob? So we need to check, are they in that collision? So we'll get the door from the world. We'll see, are they close enough to collision? If they are, do they have the cube? If they don't, then we jiggle the handle. If they do, then we say, okay, rotate it. And uh, and then, you know, uh, oh yeah, rotate it and then play uh, or open door. All right, cool. That looks good to me. <clears throat> so um, let's see, we'll get the door. So we'll, we'll do this, so we'll press. We're gonna do get actor of class, get actor of class. And this is, uh, by the way, for those who are in the programming track, this is actually a very expensive call, very expensive, and almost expensive to get all actors class, all actors class, even worse. Um, so typically you do this at the beginning of the game and not necessarily when every time the player presses the, the F key, like if they, every time they press the key, la, 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 it's like making this call and then like they destroy the game. And they're like, oh, my game crashed, I don't understand why. It's because you had an expensive call um, and the player broke the game because they made that expensive call happen very, very fast. Uh, but for our game, we're just messing around, we're learning, so it's fine. Um, so active class, what are we looking for? We're looking for the door, so BP underscore door. And then we will promote that to a variable. So we'll say promote to variable. We're gonna call this BP door underscore door. Let me drag out these other comments away for now. Um, so we can actually, actually while we're thinking about it, we can actually make this a little less expensive. It's still kind of bad, but we can make it less expensive. So what we'll do is we'll actually grab this door as getter like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click and say convert to valid git. So right click it, convert to valid git. This guy right here at the bottom. And then it changes it to this. And so um, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, do we already have the door? If so, Print string. Awesome. The door, we have the door. But if we don't have the door, 
then go and find the door and set the getter as the correct value. Make sense? All right. So uh, let's see. Press the use key. We check. Do we have the door? Yes or no. If we do have the door, great. Then we need to see is the player close enough to the door knob. So we'll go uh, grab our door as a getter. And what did we call the door knob collision? Perfect. So we'll drag out here. What is door knob collision. So we have right here get door knob collision. And, uh, and actually, since we're thinking about it, let's do this sort of thing, blah, blah, blah. And um, hmm, what is it that I want to do? I want to say is player, or let's see. What's a better way to do this? Uh, OK, I have a better way of doing this, a better way. So we'll go to the door. Let's go to the event graph. And in the event graph, when the player enters the door knob collision, perfect. So in our event graph, we should have this on begin overlap, right? This guy. What we're going to do is we're going to add a um, a setter to a to a um, boolean value and say player has entered the doorknob collision, true. And then when they leave, which is this guy right here. Um, oh, I don't have one for the doorknob. Okay, well, I'll do one for the doorknob. And when they leave the doorknob, we'll say no, the, that's false. So we're going to do this. We're going to do variable. Uh, we'll say is player in doorknob collision. And question mark, All right? So we have our begin overlap. We're gonna drag out this guy holding down Alt this time. And we have our setter and we're just gonna connect up our flow. And we'll hit yes, because they did enter the collision, right? And then I'm gonna click on our door knob collision in our components category. And I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom in our details panel right here on component end overlap. And we're going to add that guy. And then I'm going to drag out another setter for our is player in the door knob collision. Right. And so we're saying player has entered the door knob. Uh, yes. Player has left the door knob. OK, so then it's false here. It's just an easier way of doing things. Compile and save. Give you a second to set that up. OK, so let's go back to our first person character. And now I don't need the doorknob collision anymore from our door. I just need that value, that variable, to see if it's true or not. So we'll do um, uh, is player in doorknob collision. So we have our getter. And then we just need a branch. Connect it up like this. Connect both of these guys up here. Actually, I don't need this print string anymore, so we'll just go straight to there like so. And so we're going to say, is the player close enough to the doorknob? And if they are, then we need to say, does the player have the companion cube? So we will grab our door again, and we'll say, um, uh, what is it? What did I call it? Is cube placed? Is cube placed? Branch connect. So is the player close to the door knob? Yes. Check 
does the player have the cube? If no, then we need to do a jiggle handle. Okay, all right, so we can do that. So let's go back to our door. And we will go to doorknob. Let's see, we need to make a custom event as we'll have to do. All right, so this is something new. So we'll do is anywhere on our event graph, we'll right click and we'll say custom event. And this is going to be door knob jiggle. And then we'll drag out from that custom event and we'll do timeline because we're going to do an animation. And this is going to be door jiggle, uh, door knob jiggle. Oh, I can't name it the same thing. Let's do uh, door knob jiggle animation. Or we can even rename it timeline actually, it'd be better. Timeline. Uh, and we'll always play it from start. We'll always play it from start. So make sure it's connected to start. And remember, if you hold down control, you can move noodles from one pin to the other by left click and dragging and holding control. Anyway, we want to not play from start. And then we need the doorknob. And oh, we'll have to set up an animation. So we'll do that in just a second. Let's see, we need a doorknob. We need the doorknobs um relative location no we'll probably need world locations do get world uh sorry not rotation location get world location and then we can split this so split the struct and um we will we could do we can almost we could do random but i think it'll be fine if we just do a small value back and forth um, so we'll do, uh, let's see, we'll do doorknob again. We'll do set world location. And we'll split that guy. And basically we'll have a plus here, plus for float and to the bottom. So I did float plus float, by the way, float. Float plus float, this one right here. Drag that pin to the bottom and we'll connect it to the Z. And then we can actually, we'll just connect these X and Y's to where they are. The only one we care about is, is the Z value. All right, so then we need to actually have a pin coming out to connect to this guy, right? So we'll, let's build that, compile and save. Let's go into this timeline. And inside the timeline, we'll click on add a float track. And this new track will be uh, Jiggle. <laughs> um, okay, so our Jiggle will be something like this, where we have it going, like the door handle goes up and then it goes down, up and down like that, right? So add a couple pins, doesn't matter how many you do, maybe four or five. And what you're going to do is the very first pin will be zero and its value will also be zero. And then the second pin can be wherever you want. Third pin can be wherever you want. Maybe it's much lower. Fourth pin up, fifth pin, something, you know, just random. It doesn't matter. And then the very last pin needs to be, uh, let's make it, let's just do three, three seconds or maybe two seconds, two seconds. And that's really long. Uh, let's stretch these out a little bit. Blah. And this one will be two seconds and a value of zero. And I think, I think a value of 0.3 is not enough. I really want to move the handle uh, a lot. So let's do like, a, we'll do like five maybe. That might be too much. And we'll do over here this one could be negative five. And then maybe this one is three. And this one could be negative one, something like that. And then we can do um, like that. So I clicked on my fit horizontal and vertical. 
and then it, and then it fits it for it. So now hopefully the door will, you know, do this sort of up and down motion. That's what we want, right? We're we're on the Z Z value, and it's going to go. Up. Hopefully it'll go up and down. So the door will. Uh, here's our Z, and it'll go like this. Okay, so that's set, we're good. Let's go back to our event graph. And now you can see we have a green pin coming out of here because we created a float track and this is a float. So we'll connect it right here. And um, then we'll update this guy. And hopefully that works. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, doorknob jiggle. Okay, so we got that set. So now what we need to do is we need to fire this custom event whenever we get close. So let's go back to first person character. We're going to get the door again. And we're going to say um, uh, door handle, what is it? Door jiggle or something? Doorknob jiggle, this one right here. I think that's what I called it. Door knob jiggle, yes. Okay, so let's see if that works. So we're gonna go to the door, press the use key. When we do, we're gonna get the door value. And then if it's true and everything's good, then uh, we will check to see it, uh, is the player close enough? And if he is, did they place a the companion cube? And if they did, oh wait, this is supposed to be no. Whoops. Okay, so let's fix this. This actually goes down here. If rotate handle, yes. If no, there we go. That looks better. So they don't have the they don't have the uh, the companion cube. Then we'll jiggle the handle as if it was locked. Okay, so let's go to our platform and let's see. It's going to be at our core platform. We'll say, does they have a companion cube? No, they do not. Okay, that's good. That's what we want. We want it to be no. We hit play. And this all works like it's supposed to, but let's go to the door itself. And if I'm close enough, oh boy. <laughs> no, it only lets me do it once. Yeah. So, so the door, the door handle does move, but it's uh, it's not moving the way we want it to. So we'll have to fix that. Um, all right. So let's go back to our timeline. Let's change the time to only like one second. Seems like we don't need a whole lot of time to do it. We'll go back to here, here, and here. And we'll set that this one to one. Compile and save. And um, what else? So another thing we no I noticed too is that whenever I uh, hit play, or whenever I did it, the the doorknob actually let me go back into the blueprint. The doorknob did not reset back to the original position. Right, it like went up, down, and then it was like over here when it's done or something like that. So we need to fix that too. Um, so what we could do. So let me add a couple more nodes because it didn't jiggle enough for me. I need I need crazy amounts. There we go. That's cool. All right. Um, okay, so now we have a bunch of jiggling, um, but it's not resetting back to our original position. So what we'll do is we are going to grab this guy, and I'm going to drag out from the Z, and I'm going to say promote the variable, and this is going to be um, door knob. Uh, we'll say exact position. And we're actually going to connect it before we play. So what we're doing is we're getting the doorknob's position um, in the right spot. So whenever we, whenever we move the doorknob and it doesn't return to its correct position after this is done playing, 
we will fix it. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll actually grab these guys again, the set world position, we'll copy and paste like this. We will connect up the X and the Y value um, from this git world location, just like so. But then we're gonna do our git door knob exact position and connect it like that. And we're gonna put it on the finish like that. So once it's done jiggling, reset it back to its original position. All right, so now let's hit play and see what happens. So I'll go to the door and I gotta be close enough. <laughs> that looks okay. I think I think my values are a little too high though. I had that problem last semester. It was not fun. That's okay. Just you just keep messing with the values until um until it's not so crazy. So I think seven is too high, right? So we'll grab this and we'll just we'll bring it much lower. Yeah, we only we really only need to move it what like maybe two or three centimeters. So cool. An animator, I am not. Okay, so we'll go back to this guy. We'll jiggle it again. There we go. So another thing we could do too is that you know the um, the uh, the material is still white. So what we'll do is when the player enters. When the player enters the door, so let's go to our event graph. This is good. This is going to be player checks our player. Let's see, door knob jiggles when player does not have cube. And we'll just reset the color to red. That's good. OK. All right, so what we're we doing? Uh, player, player enters. Where's that at? Player doorknob. That's not what we want. Do we have a player enters? Player leaving collision complete. Leaving area. Which which one is this? Leaving area. What does that do? Event graph. When player leaving area, we turn the visibility off. Um, okay, so let's rename this leaving area collision to something a little bit more meaningful. So we'll hit F2 here and we will name this to, um, we'll name this to player uh, collision. That's good enough. And with player collision selected, go to the details panel all the way to the bottom. On component begin overlap, we'll check that guy. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, is a queue placed? Oh, actually, no, we don't even need that. We already have the function. We're gonna grab toggle door knob material. And we're going to drag this guy like that. And this will already, this will already check to see if we have the door knob, or sorry, if we have the commanding cube. And if we do, then it'll do green. And if we don't, we'll say, nope. And then we will on player, uh, on component end overlap player collision, we'll drag that same function and we will say reset the material. So when I leave, when I leave the collision, this collision, then it will reset the material. All right, so let's see if that worked. So if I step on the platform, it's red and so on, that looks good. And when I step into the collision, and I walk away. Oh, is it backwards? Let's see. Um, oh, you know what it is? It's because it's because these two guys are so close together. You have to be careful about that. See, these two collisions are literally right next to each other, so the logic doesn't know what to do. So I'm going to move them a little bit away from each other. 
And actually, I will also move this light thing that created a while ago out of the way. All right, so we'll hit play again. And if I step into this one, door does what it's supposed to do. That's all good. And if I step into the door, then this turns on as well, which is fine. And if I get close, then it complains. And if I try to jiggle it, it won't let me open the door. Come on, let me in. All right, so that's good. Let's go back to the door. Um, and then we need another another custom event. So let's see, I'm getting a little disorganized here. We'll put those together. Turns off help with text and player leaves area. This one is gonna be reset door knob material. And then this is set door knob material. File and save. Okay, so we need another custom event. So we'll do custom event, add custom event. This one is gonna be rotate door knob. And what do we need? We need a, another timeline. So we'll drag out from here, we'll do timeline. We're gonna say uh, door knob rotation. I spelled that wrong. Ro rotation, there we go. It's gonna play from start. Drag that guy out like that. Um, we need the doorknob. We need to get the doorknob's current rotation. So get world rotation. And if you guys remember last time, I totally messed up the rotation and I probably will again, let's see. What is it? Is it set relative rotation? Okay, we'll try that. And how do we wanna rotate it? So let's look at the viewport. Let's look at the doorknob. And we wanna rotate on the X axis. You see right here, it's the, the uh, red arrow coming out. That's, that's the way we wanna rotate it. And it might be kind of difficult for us to see the door rotating. We might want actually a different different shape. Let's do, um, let's do a different shape. We'll do, uh, do we have star? That would be cool if we had a star. I don't think we have a star. Laser pointer. Nope. Okay. Well, what else do we have? We have cubes. We could do a cube, I guess. Cone. Hmm. A rotate handle, that's kind of cool. We might not have that. No, we'll just do cube, it's fine. So uh, which one do I want? I want static mesh cube. Yeah, there we go. And now I rotate it. Yeah, you can see that it rotates. And you can even see when I'm rotating it, it's this red one, right? So we're gonna rotate on the X value. So let's go back to our event graph. We will go to our door knob. Oh, sorry, we'll go right here and right click, split struct. We will, um, what do we need? We need the door knob. We're gonna say set relative rotation. This one, rotation, split that structure. And we are going to rotate on the X. So it'll be X to X. We need float plus float. Drag this guy out, connect this guy up. We'll go into our timeline, new float. Uh, maybe, maybe one second, ah, one second. Two um, two keys, and by the way, you hold down shift to make a key, right? If I didn't tell you that before. First key is gonna be zero, zero. And then the second key is gonna be two seconds. And then I think we wanna rotate um, negative. No, that's positive. We'll do, we'll do like one second for, or one, one centimeter for uh, door nav rotation, where is it at? 
to, and we'll say, oops, two. And we'll say, um, we'll just do one. We'll see how that goes. Compile and save. And uh, let's see, where do we need to be? We need to be in the event graph. Ah, oh, I didn't name the track correctly. Okay, so let's go back into our timeline. Select the whole track like this by clicking on the word new track. Hit F2 to rename it. And I think you can also right click. Oops, I did not mean to make that. Yeah. Yes, right click, rename. This will be door knob rotation. Looks good. Go back to our event graph. Connect. And then, con and then connect our flow update to this guy, like so. And then um, I believe we have a the SQ placed. If so, set the text. And then we have this door hinge opening stuff, this part right here. So we're going to move this guy right here. And let's see. Actually, we don't need a custom event. We don't need a custom event. We can get rid of this guy. We'll get rid of this rotate door knob. Get rid of that. We don't need it. And we're going to grab this whole thing, this whole block, hold on control and hit X to cut to cut it. And then I'm going to go right between the store hinge thing and I'm going to say paste like so. And then I'm going to reconnect our flow up like, uh, oh, something like this. Very close. All right. So first it's going to play for start. Rotate the door, and then when it's done, I'm sorry, rotate the doorknob, and then when it's done, then rotate my door for me. So this rotate, rotates door knob, and this one rotates the door hinge. All right, let's see if that worked. Probably not, but let's see anyway. Um, okay, so what do we need to do? We need to go to the platform. In the platform, we go to does player have companion cube? We'll say, yes, he does. Compile and save. Go back to our game. When I step on to this one, yay, it's green. That looks good. And then when I go to the door and I step into the doors area, that's good. Oh, it's rotating. Oh, that's cool, but I did not press F. So I need to fix that. <laughs> that's pretty cool, but I didn't press F. Ah, uh, come on, let me in. And if I go back to the, the platform, sorry. And I see, oh, true, what, why did it complain? Oh, it's still. Thank you. Is not set. Oh, um, hmm. What we have a we have a bug somewhere, and the bug is if it's true, then set the cube is true. What the heck? And oh, it's because I need to step on the platform first. That's what it is. Um, yeah, I don't I don't like this. I don't like this at all. That's okay, we'll fix that in a second. Let's add another comment. Broken, it's broken. Terrible programmers, we need to fix it. Um, okay, so let's go back to our door and we need to, okay, it has all the stuff, but this needs to, this needs to happen whenever the, um, Another player presses a key, right? We want it to rotate right here. So what can we do? How can we do this? We can go and we can we can make this a custom event. So we will. Let's go back. We'll do this. We'll go back to this. You know, I deleted that custom event and I should have done it, but that's okay. We're gonna grab these two guys. Well, we will disconnect them. So it's no longer connected. We're gonna right click custom event, uh, rotate. And 
rotate and open door. So let's see, rotate door knob and open door. Play from start. File and save. And now um, go to our first person character, blueprint. I'm going super fast here. So you guys are probably like, what is he doing? Uh, door knob, let's see, bo open door and it's going to be rotate door knob and open door. Goes to the true. That looks good. File and save. Now I hit play. I have to step on the platform because that's a bug that we need to fix. I step into the area, it's green. I get close enough. Congrats, the door is now open. And I hit the use key. The door knob rotates and then the door opens for me. Okay, so a couple things we need to change in my six minutes of time left. First thing we should do is um, we'll go to the door itself and it's no longer saying congrats, the door is now open. Now it should say uh, the, the door is open, now the door is open, now it should say the door is now unlocked, right? And then they can press the key. Um, also, it is no longer, it should no longer be happening on our doorknob uh, overlap these, these messages, right? I don't think that should be happening on that. I think what it should, where it should happen is on our player collision, this player collision. So I'm gonna actually grab our, um, let's see, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab all of this from our doorknob section where it says check to see if you have the companion cube. If so, set the helper text. If not, set the helper text, right? I'm gonna disconnect it. I'm gonna grab all this and drag it down to this guy over here where it is our player begins overlap collision. And I'm gonna connect it like that. And we'll compile and save. And now whenever I enter the collision, it'll give me the message, right? Instead of being close to the doorknob. So that's better. And then when I bring the cube down, looks good. Oh, hmm, helper text is not showing up. Okay, so let's fix the helper text. Back to our doorknob, why is helper text not showing up? We have it. Helper text, set color, set visibility. What? Ah, it's there. True, set visibility. Helper text. text. What did I do wrong? When I end overlap. Okay, maybe, maybe I am smoking the crack and I don't know that I'm smoking the crack. Oh, yeah, okay, there it is. Helper text is showing. Oh, no, it's not showing up the second time. Oh, why? Why is that happening? Let's see. Do I have a do once on there? Oh, I do have a do once. That's what's wrong. All right, so we can get rid of this do once now. We can just show the helper text always. Let's get rid of that. We'll connect those guys back like that. Go away. Oh, three minutes. Play. Uh-huh, 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 that looks good. We bring the platform, looks good. And now the door is unlocked. Good luck on the next hole. Boop. Door opens. It's magic. Perfect. Okay, so what else do we need to do? We need to um, make it so that this can't happen 100 billion times, right? Because um, now that I have that that do once is no longer on there, I can uh, this I reintroduce this bug. See, I can keep pressing F and I'm reopening the door forever. Open it some more. Perfect. Open it some more. So I need to add do once to that as well. All right. So we will go to our door. 
And right here, I'm going to add a do once. So that will only let the door open one time, and that is it. File and save. And we'll go to here. Congratulations. And boop. And the door opens. Perfect. And if I go in and try it again, nope. Cool. All right, what else can we do? We need to fix that bug. I don't know that I'll have two minutes to fix that bug, but let's see if we can do it. Where we need? We need door. No, we need platform right here. This guy. So um, does door have platform? Door does not have platform, does it? Um, no, it only has first person character. What we what we ideally we need to do is we need to create a game instance that checks the, the value of that particular door to see if it's locked or not locked, uh, depending on if we have the companion cube or not. Um, we could either do it that way, that's probably the best way, or we'll actually set uh, is cube is placed on the cube itself, the companion cube. So the companion cube will companion cube will set the game instance. The game instance will say, yes, the cube is placed. So actually we won't be able to fix this today because we need to add a game instance, but we can add a game instance right now. So let's do that. Last thing we want to do, last super thing. Uh, okay, so we're going to go to core, right click. We're going to do um, blueprint class. And right here at the bottom under all classes, we're going to type in game instance. And here you have it right here, game instance, this one right there. That's the one we want. We're going to say select, yes. No more time. We're going to call this, um, uh, we'll call this my game instance. And then we'll hit save. And if you haven't already, do save all, save everything. All right. And when we come back on Thursday, we will fix that bug. So that's what I want to do. I want to fix that bug. And then I want to add the companion cube, which is very, very easy. It'll take just a second. And then um, and then start, hopefully start on the first person character um, blueprint where we, um, this guy, where we add logic to grab the companion cube and move it around in the world. Are you definitely gonna keep that bug in there just so you can show us up fixing it? Yes, we're gonna fix it together on Thursday. <laughs> All right. So, all right. Uh, if there's no other questions, then I will see you guys on Thursday. Thanks for class. Uh, really have a great quick, day. How, uh, how long does it take for the uh, recordings to, to to be uploaded? Um, I don't know. Day or two. Is, is there a recording missing? I thought I uploaded them all. I I mean for today specifically. Uh, oh, it it. It doesn't take long for it to upload, but it takes a really long time for it to um, to process uh, the high quality version. Let me stop the stream actually, because this isn't this is not that important.